What's going on guys? This is the Full Stack Bro coming at you with another video today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the realities of a software developer. Now, I've been doing this for quite a while, about six plus years, but overall I've been in the tech space for 11 plus years, okay? And one of the things that I've noticed from transitioning from a web designer to developer to software engineer, there's definitely a lot of things that you have to learn and you have to just be more patient with certain things. In the beginning, you're gonna feel like, okay, I need to just write code, get things done and solve a bunch of problems, right? And you might think that you have what it takes to solve complex problems, but you're gonna easily understand that that's not the case. Certain projects are gonna be way above your pay grade and it's gonna you're gonna spend a lot of time researching how to solve different problems, trying new things, and just refactoring your code until that problem is solved. And sometimes when working through these projects, you're gonna be very discouraged. And you're gonna think that you're not really good at being a developer. And every single software developer out there has had this problem. And this is what, what is called imposter syndrome. And if you don't have imposter syndrome and you're working through code and you think that your code is the, is the best that's out there, trust me, you're not going to grow and you're not going to become better in this space. So I got a list of things that I've definitely dealt with just in my career in general, once I transitioned into becoming a software developer and some of the things that you guys should look into and actually watch out for. OK, because if you feel discouraged right now, if you're working through a problem right now and you can't solve it, trust me. It's go you're going to solve that problem. You just have to put more work into it and just be patient. That's all there is to it. OK, so number one is debugging code. You're going to be debugging code all the time. It doesn't matter when you're working on fixing a bug or on a project, a, a small to medium sized project. You're going to be debugging your code constantly because you might write some code that solves one problem, but then it introduces another problem. So then you got to go back and refactor, make sure everything works correctly. And sometimes that is fun. You learn a lot of things by debugging code and actually looking at other people's code and trying to understand the workflow a little bit, right? Try to understand exactly why the code is working the way it is. But then there's going to be times where you're going to get frustrated as well uh, with the code not working as it, as it should is introducing new bugs and then you have to make an executive decision on whether you want to refactor the entire thing or get someone else involved that has had experience writing this code and making sure that you guys are on the same page that it makes sense to refactor or is this something that you're totally missing because asking questions and actually reaching out to other people instead of like dealing with your ego at that point to where you just want to solve things you want to get things done you're going to save a lot of time. Understanding that crucial lesson made me a better software engineer and developer. When it comes to debugging your code, always make sure to ask questions if you can't figure it out in 45 minutes to an hour. Um, ask a developer that, ha that knows more than you whether you're going down the right path, if you need to refactor the code, if there's anything else that you need to do, because that's going to make you more successful. That's going to help you save a lot of that brain power here. You don't want to waste this every day. You're using this. And if you're spending too much time in front of the computer for four hours, just trying to code something out and it's not working out, you're wasting a lot of precious time and energy. Enjoy debugging code, ask questions. If you can't figure something out, it will save you a lot of time. Number two is feature creep. Now we'll be talking about projects. This is going to be feature creep. Now what this means is, Let's say, for example, you get a project, you see all the requirements, you go through it, everything looks good. OK, I'm just going to write code and execute and solve these problems. But then product management comes in and is like, hey, we, we, we forgot this requirement. This is very crucial for the customer. So we need to add that in. And say, for example, you're already ahead of schedule, like you're already getting things done. You're ahead of schedule and the deadline. You don't have to worry about it. Right. You don't have to do any crunch time. Now, OK, now you have to add that requirement in based off of products feedback. Now you're adding more time to that project and now you're spending more time to build something that is required, which could have gotten added to the requirements in the, in the beginning phase of the project. And a lot of junior developers do this. A lot of junior developers do this is they look at the requirements of a ticket and they just work on that. They just do the bare minimum. 
If you want to be successful as a software engineer, you have to question the requirements. You have to do it because it's going to save you a lot of time when it comes to working through the project in itself. So what I initially like to do is whenever I get a project, I look at the requirements and I always ask questions, think about different edge cases. And I will ask these questions around those different edge cases and get products feedback because I know for a fact that is going to be a requirement that's going to add to the to the requirements of this project. So asking questions, guys, asking questions, having that communication style between product and engineering is going to make you better for it because it's going to account for your time and also products time. And you guys are going to be working together simultaneously just to get this project out the door. OK, there's going to be times where you're going to have feature creep on a lot of your projects. And it is what it is at the end of the day. You can't catch all of it, you know, but if you start to just ask questions, it's going to save you so much time. I can't iterate that enough, guys. Make sure that you account for your time. Make sure that you understand the requirements to its to its core, to where you understand fundamentally exactly what you need to build and always ask questions. Just ask questions. Number three is code review. Code review is a fundamental piece to making sure that your code is up to standards. OK, if your code is not up to standard and there's a lot of holes in it, trust me, whoever's going to be peer reviewing your code, usually it's a tech lead, it's a senior developer, right? A lot of the, the code that you're writing, it could be perfect, right? You might get the green check. OK, cool. This goes into QA or whatever environment that get, goes that you guys set up for testing. And then you have to wait for QA's feedback and then, you know, go through that whole workflow again. You're going to learn a lot because of the critiques on your code. And that's going to help you become better. Like I've been you trust me, there's so many times where I worked on a project and it got destroyed. Like I'm talking about my code was like, this is wrong. You need to change this. Why are we doing this? And I'm just like, dang, like I really missed the, the boat here. But honestly, that's very good for me to understand. OK, I, I didn't understand that this wasn't part of the coding standard. So now I have to, you know, refactor my code so that it it's cleaner. And at, at the time, I was just like, you know, what are you talking about this, that and the third? But then as you start to work through projects, you're going to be more comfortable with that feedback because it's not necessarily a bad thing. Everybody's going to make mistakes. You could be a 10x developer out there that could write code very efficient, but there's always going to be someone with a different style that's going to critique you on little small things. And you can either take it as face value or just be like, no, I'm just going to, I don't believe what you're saying and hash it out that way. But honestly, if when you're working on a team, you're working as one, right? Like you want to make sure that everything aligns to what you guys are building, uh, whether the code base is very clean, whether the functionality is right. You have to do it for the betterment of the team, not just yourself. So code review is a great experience. Don't be discouraged. Trust me, <laughs> it is what it is. And you're going to learn a lot from it. Um, it's just part of the game. That's just the reality of being a software developer. You're gonna, people are going to just look at your code and it was like, what the heck is this? And you can argue it. But at the end of the day, it's just what it is. It's a humbling experience. Fourth thing is creative problem solving, right? So you can be very creative with solving problems. It's a thrill for me to solve a problem, especially if I don't have experience with it and I'm spending time researching exactly what needs to be done. And the more questions that I ask, like I said, the more feedback that I will get so that I'm more successful with solving this problem. This makes it more creative to be uh, not just to be stuck in a box where you're just writing a bunch of if else statements and you're working with like just one workflow. You could get very creative in the ways you solve problems. There's many different ways to solve a problem as a software engineer. OK, it doesn't matter. Um, you could write code and you could do if else statements, you could do case statements, you could do recursive functions, regular functions. It doesn't matter. OK, you could write for loops as long as this solves the problem and you're getting the right result. That's fine. Um, just make sure that you're understanding the flow of your code, that you include comments in your code. That's very important. 
um, because if I don't understand the flow of what you're writing, a comment would make sense in terms of like, what's the first step, second, third, so on and so forth. If it's a big function, you'll be very creative here to solve problems. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're learning along the way. Number five. Now with this one, legacy code is a nightmare. It is. This is what you would consider tech debt. Now tech debt is just code that's been written a certain way to solve a problem and get something out the door a lot faster. Now, everybody's gonna run through this. Um, as you start to mature and get better as a developer, you're gonna go back to your code that you wrote before and you're gonna be like, why did I write it this way? There's a better way to do this. And this shows that you've grown, okay? Legacy code is just part of the game. It's always gonna be there. Do you have to take care of it right away? No, you don't have to take care of it right away. But if you need to solve this problem, like if you need to solve a problem and this legacy code is, is a blocker for that, then you might have to refactor that or you might have to create something new. And usually I would just ask if I see tech, if I see something that's considered tech debt, I will ask somebody like, hey, do we need to spend time refactoring this? Because I don't want to spend like five hours trying to rewrite this code when it in, in reality, we don't even need it. Number one or number two is not something that we need to focus on right now. Legacy code in itself is always going to be there. You just have to, you know, make sure that you understand whether you need to refactor it now or later. And then the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the, just a joy of having things work. I love when I finish a project and it works. Everybody giving me positive feedback on it. Like all of the work, the hard work that went into understanding the requirements, refactoring code, making sure that the workflow works as intended creating documentation around how things work, right? Documentation is very important to understand the workflow of something. And, you know, as engineers, we tend to just write stuff. When we're working through a project, we write it, get it done, it's out there, that's it. But if you wanna have a mature approach to not only engineers understanding exactly what's going on, but then also like other people, like within the company or even the customer, you wanna outline the workflow in itself. Okay, you want to outline it in documentation, maybe have a flow chart in, in terms of what's going on. Um, that's very crucial for anybody that's new coming in or someone that just has an inquiring mind about the workflow in itself and they're trying to sell that workflow, how it actually works on the road. And it just makes your life a lot easier and you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, going through the documentation when it's asked for it. You just do it as soon as the project is done. I love seeing things work out of the box when you write stuff out and it fixes a lot of problems. And as software developers, that's what we do. We solve problems. We think about, we're always constantly thinking about the next best thing to solve a problem. You have to understand that there won't be a day wh where you won't solve a problem or that you're thinking about better ways to solve a problem. Um, it's just a great feeling. Um, and the more experience that you get, the more understanding you will have in terms of what tools will work best for getting you to the end goal, like AI, right? What's going to actually help you become a better developer to building your own thing, if you want to, your own projects that, that could take off if you want. I mean, it, it, it's all about learning at the end of the day. And you're going to have some trials and tribulations, of course. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some good days. But the bad days are the days where you build resilience in yourself. You actually build more of a callus around uh, what you could do and what you could take. Okay, some people could burn out very easily, especially if they got a bunch of deadlines and they just don't want to spend a lot of time writing code to solve problems. And this might not be for you, right? But it takes a strong mind and a callous mind to do this. And if you love technology like I do, you like to write code every single day, you enjoy talking about different technologies, then this is the field for you. If not, you could do other things too. You could be a product manager, you could be a data scientist, you could be a sales rep. It doesn't matter, whatever the case is, just figure that out. And if you really wanna go down the software engineering route, you know, you can let me know on IG or TikTok. If you have any questions around 
what path that you should take, you can reach out to me. Also, I have an email, right? Like right here on the screen, the full stack bro at gmail.com. If you need help, reach out to me. I can help you. I can get you to where you need to be. All right. So that's it, guys. That's the video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. I want to see you guys in the comments, whether this video was helpful. If you're trying to jump into software engineering, all right, you have the skills, keep working at it every day. You will get better. All right. Talk soon, guys.